hash join limitations. This is one that came in on Stack Overflow. I'm doing a not in query and hoping to get the fast hash anti-join, which is a very cool way of doing a non-membership. Non hash anti-joins are super fast. But this seems limited to being in only a single column in the subquery. Is concatenating all the columns if I want to do more an acceptable workaround? When I read this, my first thought was like, I am unaware of any single column limitation in the not in part that would block a hash join. So I'm going to create a table called T1, create a table called T2. I'm going to put a hundred or oh, thousand rows into each one, gather some stats. They have the same data in each one, obviously. So I'm not going to get any results from a not in query, but really we're just looking interested in the execution plans. And so this is the example that came out on Stack Overflow. When I got two columns in here, not just one column, select star from T1 where X comma Y not in select XY from T2, no hash join. What it does is the merge anti-join, which is generally more expensive because we have to sort both input sets and then merge them together. It's a big slug on your temporary table space. And so here's the question. Then they said, well, this is how I'm working around it. Rather than doing X comma Y, I'm concatenating the two. Therefore, it's now just one column, so to speak, and comparing it to the concatenation of those, and hey presto, I get hash join anti, which is super cool. What's going on here? Because as I said, I'm pretty sure there is no limit to the number of columns you can have there. If we go back to the first one that went back to the merge join and try work out why, if we print out more information from the execution plan, in particular the predicate section, you start seeing this, all these internal functions and two number and all this kind of stuff going on. This is perhaps a better clue as to why we couldn't do a hash join because hash joins are generally about pure equality and pure inequality. I skipped over this when I created the tables deliberately. If we look at the table structures, they're actually the same data, but they're different data types. One of them is numbers and one of them is varchar two. So if we actually take that into consideration and bring all the data types into alignment, two char on the numerics, then compare them to characters, hey presto, I get a hash anti-join. There's no limit on the number of columns, but there is consideration, like all things Oracle, that you want to get your data types correct. Having said that, let's explore a tiny bit further. Drop the tables now, they're both created as integers. So data types are now in alignment. Populate them, gather some more stats, we're good to go. As I said, now that the data types are in alignment, we should be able to get a hash join, right? No, we're still back on the merge join. Why is this? We can see now in the notes section, I've eliminated all the two chars and the two numbers. There's no data type conversion going on. However, there is still some functions being applied this internal function. We're not told what the internal function is, but the reason it's there is because we have to deal when it comes to membership and not membership with nulls. If I recreate the tables, both with not null, then I know that there's always data in both sides of the subquery. Repopulate my data, explain plan, and there's my hash join. The key things are, as always, in everything in terms of Oracle, Please use the right data types. You always get punished some way in some way, shape or form. We've done alpha sour sessions, I think last month where we had things like N chars and bar chars. Use the right data types um, when it comes to comparison and always be careful of nulls, super important. Nulls and not in are not good bedfellows at all.